Hi everyone, it's Evi Martinson here and welcome to this Adobe Lightroom session. And we're gonna go through the develop module and here I have a coastal landscape photograph with a green seagrass in the foreground and dark dramatic skies. This is the finished and developed picture and the next one is an undeveloped raw file from the camera <clears throat> so you need to develop your images when you are shooting in the raw files in your camera and I recommend you do that <clears throat> let's get started the first thing I will do with this image is to adjust the white balance I'm gonna warm up the tones a little bit so I'm gonna drag the color temperature slider a little bit up to the right up to, for example, here, 6863. You see, if I drag it more to the right, it will be very warm. To the left, it will be too cold. So I will find the balance that suits this mood. So I end up around here. <clears throat> Next thing I do is to adjust the contrast. I can drag the slider up to around 23. I can lift the shadows a little bit up. And adjust the clarity, which sharpens the medium tones. The clarity, it sharpens the medium tones in the image. Here we go, at 23. And the next is the vibrance. It's a very smart tool for boosting up your colors. And the colors that are not so present will be boosted up. And let's see what happens. I drag the slider around up to 45. You see here, 45. You see now it's already a better picture. And I want to add a little bit saturation. Maybe up to 11. So I have the vibrance at 45, the saturation at 11, and the clarity at 23. Let me go further down. We here we have the HSL, which is the U saturation and luminance tool. And we can adjust the luminance of a color, for example, the green which is very present here in this image. It's the green seagrass. I will light up the green seagrass by dragging this slider to the right. So I can go further up to around here. See now we have a much better contrast and the green will pop up even more. I can add some more saturations. I will also work with the green here. I drag the saturation on the green color up to around 40, I think. There we go. Now you can see we have a much better color, almost like the old Fujichrome Velvia slide films in the old days. So let's go further down. Here's the detail module and we go to the sharpening and I will sharpen the image and I drag the slider up to about 58 and the radius up to 1.1 and the masking tool if you don't know what that is that is the tool that will mark out the field you don't need sharpening on so I Press the option button on the keyboard and drag the slider and you can see the dark fields here in the image. The dark fields will not receive any sharpening. Drag it up to around 40. So the, the black fields here now will not get sharpened because you don't need sharpening on blank surfaces like the C here. And the sky and further down 
we have this lens correction tool so each lenses has their own uh, deviations and uh, here I can enable the profile correction and I can also remove the chromatic aberration and the chromatic aberration is color lines between between for example the sky and the horizon so I just click that and it will go away and the next thing go to the profile and I check the vignette because I want to keep the vignette it's a little bit darker in the at the edges of the frame which keeps the viewer more inside the frame so if it's a little bit darker at the edges the viewer will be, be seduced to be inside this area which is the important area and I will also go up here on top to work with the brush and the brush tool is very useful we can for example adjust the white balance on the, the, the colors on the colors on the rocks and you can see here the rocks has much colors but it's a little bit cool color temperature here I will only use the brush on the rocks you can see what it does with the colors so I will warm up the color temperature here a little bit to the right go up to around 20 21 I, I can adjust the brush by dragging scrolling on the mouse I can adjust a little bit, little bit smaller like this then I can go in between the green here see now you get a warmer tone and the colors pops out but I don't touch the green with the brush now because I will like to keep the cool green color in this image use it only on the small rocks here now we already have a better picture just a slight change in color temperature I work with the brush drag over the small rocks There we go. I can also pick a new one, and uh, I want to lift the shadows on this area, lift it up, and I can just I press the new button, adjust the brush a little bit because now I'm going to work over. A larger area here so I adjust the, the brush size here and then we can lift the shadows by using this I think we can go up to around 30 and I drag over here you see now it pops out a little bit more but I want a little bit cooler so just go there if you double click a slider it goes back to the starting point so now let's see the difference here it was the, the starting point I lift the shadows a little bit better 
but not too much like this, then I lose the contrast around 30, 31. So, not so bad. We can add a little bit more saturation just on the foreground. So we have a much better picture and we can also use the graduated neutral density filter that is built in here. So if I use this graduated neutral density filter I can make the sky a little bit more dramatic and I can take this and drag it down. And then I go with the exposure, take it down with the shadows. Now we are, we have a little bit more dramatic sky. I want to adjust the graduation here. It's uh, all, everything about this line. We we'll get the full graduation. And things below here will have a graduation from full effect here of the filter and to nothing. So I will adjust the angle a little bit here. I want to drag it a little bit down. A little bit more like this. Then I have a larger area for the full effect and to nothing moves down here here's the graduation field then we close it and I think we have a finished product this is the the end result we can see it in full frame it's a much better image than the raw file that was imported from the camera and in the old days of film, we could go in the store and buy different types of films and uh, with different qualities in color, tones and contrast. Now we have all the old film types in one RAW file and we can develop it where we want it. So it's a very useful tool, these uh, RAW files and the Adobe Lightroom develop module. So thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you in another video. If you want to learn more you can go to my online photo course at panamaphotoexplorations.com Go to panamaphotoexplorations.com You can find a link below the video here and enroll into the program and you can learn more about Adobe Lightroom and outdoor photography in my online courses. See you there. Thank you.